you know, yes. how, how do you like this panel? And do you agree that it's good for George Zimmerman, this panel? Uh, absolutely. I think that women will find that what he did was more reasonable. They seem to be more sympathetic to violence and self-defense. I think women have a different viewpoint that can be beneficial for the defense in this case. Men are more aggressive and they may think, why did he follow him? Or why was this man walking out by himself? So women have a different perspective of walking alone, being alone, bearing arms. So I think it's definitely encouraging for the defense at this time. Yeah, Jeff, it's so hard though uh, to read a jury. I mean, I went through the descriptions of of these jurors and you know they do seem to be uh, a fairly educated group there's a number of moms among this group but you know when when I I have had the experience of being on a jury and I feel like people are very good at taking this process seriously they listen to the evidence and and I think it's very difficult to tell just looking at these descriptions which way this jury will go well, I think you're right, Martha. I mean, this is a particularly hard case. I think that if you just listen to your viewers, you'll find that there are so many people entrenched that think they're going in one way and they may be coming out exactly the same way. Can the jury, however, be fair and impartial? That's what we'll have to see. I tend to agree with you. And there are five moms, I believe, on this jury, and we have a 17-year-old victim here. And I think although there's some gun-toting Floridian women on the jury, the fact that their moms may balance that out. And so I'm very hopeful that they can be fair and impartial. Yeah. Does it matter that there are no African-American jurors? Uh, we understand that five are white, one is a Hispanic woman. Marla, is that significant? I mean, I definitely think this case brings up a lot of racial tension. So when you pick a jury, you tend to see what's going to benefit you and what are the problems of your case. And this case is about race, unfortunately, and it's also about reasonableness and self-defense. So they, the lawyers look to see what is going to benefit their case, their positions, what people that they would think would be more like-minded for those issues. And I think that in this case, to have mostly white people as jurors is something yeah. that the prosecution may need to think about in regards to playing up whether there was racial tension or not. Yeah, it, you know, it, when you think about this whole situation, Jeff, I mean, Trayvon Martin is not there to tell his side of the story. And there are pictures of George Zimmerman uh, with injuries to the back of his head, which would appear to line up with some of what he said happened that night. And then you've got this tape with the screams on it that the experts say there's no way to figure out who was screaming. And boy, wouldn't that be helpful. Uh, that would have been very helpful. Right. Well, let's, let's, let's hone this down for the viewers. I think there's two important facts. Uh, from the, the one point of view, the state's point of view, we all know that George Zimmerman was told by the 911 operator to stand down, and he didn't do that. That's the worst thing for them. Yep. On the other hand, the autopsy seems to indicate that Trayvon Martin was on top of George Zimmerman when the gun went off. That's obviously a factor the other way. So there's two things that are competing, and the whole case is going to come down to George Zimmerman's testimony, should he testify, as to how this happened. How did Trayvon Martin attack him such that it was reasonable for him to use deadly force? That's what this case will come down to. Marla, you know, what do you think? Is that what the case comes down to ultimately? Yes, ultimately, these six women are going to have to determine what George Zimmerman did was reasonable or not. Yeah. They're going to have to determine if him being beaten on, on the ground, someone on top of him, if he can shoot and use deadly force and if that was reasonable. Yeah. The threat does not have to be real, Martha. It can be something that George Zimmerman thought was going to be deadly to him. So these women are going to really have to kind of get into the minds of mm -hmm. both Mr. Zimmerman and unfortunately Mr. Martin, who can't tell his side of the yeah. story. It's an emotional case all around uh, and it gets underway very soon. Thank you so much, both of you. Good to have you here.